Hey y'all, it's your math teacher, Mr. Boyden, and welcome to the first video for my geometry class. Um, I hope that you'll enjoy this one and it'll be helpful, especially if you miss class or if you need a refresh or anything like that. So you know what? Um, let's just get into it. In the, beginning, in the beginning of geometry, we spend a lot of time first getting sort of our building blocks together, and that's a lot of base concepts and vocabulary. It's kind of like learning your ABCs before you learn how to spell and write poetry and things like that. So that's what this first video is going to be about. It's going to be kind of these base fundamental things. If we have good habits from the beginning of the class, the rest of the class is a lot easier. Kind of like if you learn how to spell early, then a lot of things later get easier. If you have no idea how to spell words, then uh, later writing is going to be harder. This is kind of the math equivalent of that. Okay, so we're going to start out today by looking at all of our vocab terms, and you probably already know some of them, and some of them maybe you're going to be new, and that's okay. What I want to start with is we're going to start by making some visuals for a lot of these things. If this is your first video with me, I want to encourage you to draw some of these things and write them and take notes. Don't just watch because you won't retain as much of the information. Okay. Definitions. Well, of course there's definitions. That's not very interesting. Points. Yeah, there's lots of points in geometry. Okay. So here's going to be one. I'm going to make a picture of a point and I'm going to call it point B. Okay. So that's a picture of a point. Uh, a line. A line's pretty easy. You might think a line is like that. What we're going to see today is that a line actually goes on forever in both directions and they're always straight. There's no curvy lines in geometry. That's actually a good thing. It makes it easier. Collinear collinear in fact you know what i'm going to put another word after this because we almost always it's like how you know like if you're spelling there's almost always a u after q collinear is almost always referring to points and collinear points look like this they're just lined up they're on the same line okay a line looked like this a line segment means it doesn't go on forever it has some definable length or some finite length Endpoints, I just drew the endpoints. There's one right there, and there's one right there. They're the points that are at the end, okay? What is a plane? A plane is harder to describe. In fact, I'm actually gonna say we're gonna wait until later in the video to show and talk about that. And coplanar, those are gonna go together. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. A ray, we could definitely talk about that, like a ray of light or a ray of sunshine. A ray is like if you only took one side of the line. So it has one end point. In fact, I'm gonna make a note right here. It has one end point and the other end goes on forever. What about a midpoint? A midpoint on a segment is the point that is in the middle. That's why we call it that, it's the midpoint. So not everything in math is named to be confusing. In fact, a lot of things are named to be easier. And you know what, I'm gonna add one thing. Maybe uh, this is two inches and this is two inches and we see that and that helps us to understand it's exactly in the middle. Segment addition. Segment addition is a really fancy name to say that if I have, um, actually I'll draw one, I'll draw a segment. So if I have a segment and I know that one part of the segment is one long and the other part of the segment is four, then the whole entire thing, you just add them together and it's five. Okay, segment addition is just a fancy way of saying that idea. If you have two parts of a segment, you can add them together and make a bigger segment. That's all it is, okay? And bisects, let's get that one in here while we're here. A bisect means to cut something in half. And the key here, y'all, is that it has to be exactly in half, exactly right down the middle. It's not like, well, we cut it into two pieces and one's bigger. No, that wouldn't be bisecting. It means cuts in half, so there are two equal size pieces. So there are two equal pieces. All right. So this is kind of a really quick overview of, the lot of, of a lot of the things we're going to talk about today. Um, if you need to pause the video and if you want to do that so you can write some stuff down, then that's okay. Guys, when you watch my videos, there's going to be a lot of times when I tell you to pause and say, ah, oh, you probably want to write this or try this question out for yourself. So if you need to now, that's awesome. Um, if you don't need to, then let's keep going. So now that we got the really basics out of the way, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth on some of these terms. The first term we're gonna go more in depth on is a point, okay? So a point, the most important things you need to know about a point is that it has no size. You can't say something like, well, that point is three inches long. No, points are just describing a location, okay? It's only a location. 
And the other thing you need to know, and I would like you to include this in your notes, is that it always has a capital letter. That might not seem like a big deal right now. You go, oh, come on, are you serious? It really matters. Actually, later it's going to matter and stuff is going to be less confusing if you understand this and develop a good habit. Okay, so notice this picture down here looks almost exactly the same as what I drew up above. And they have some examples here. It's really hard to have an example because even here, the seeds on this bagel, they have some size and a point has no size, but it's kind of a close approximation. Next thing we're going to look at is a line. We have it right here. What's going to be new right now is right here, we have the way that we write a line. So notice, guys, I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger for you. The line AB, it just means it's a line that has points A and B on it, and we put a symbol above it that looks like a line. And that's it. The other thing I want you to see, it can be called BA or AB. It doesn't matter. Because what those are both saying, this says, this is a line that has points A and B. This is a line that has points B and A. Well, this line is both of those lines, okay? So that's just fine. Here we have a piece of spaghetti, although remember, lines go on forever and pieces of spaghetti, well, at least as far as I know, pieces of spaghetti don't go on forever. That'd be kind of fun if they did. Um, to be a line, they would have to keep going. So actually, these spaghetti strands are more like a line segment, but that's what our book says, so that's okay. Close enough. Now we're going to talk about a plane. The reason I avoided a plane is because a plane goes on in every direction forever. So it's what it is. It is any flat surface. Okay. So there, we don't know of any flat surface that goes forever. Um, but a good like analog for it is the top of your desk, or if you're writing on a piece of paper, anything that's not curved. Let me give you an example of something that's not a plane. So maybe it makes more sense. If you were going to take like a basketball and you were going to try to write on the surface of a basketball, you're writing on a curved surface. And so that is not a plane. But for us, anything flat is a plane. The reason we talk about this is because geometry has different rules if you're doing it on a curved surface, like the earth, for example. And what we're going to focus on in this class is the geometry on flat surfaces. Okay. So that's all a plane is. Um, this is what a book will draw for a plane. It's pretty hard to draw a plane because it goes forever. Cause really, if you were going to draw this, it keeps going and that's pretty hard to show, but that's the best picture that we have. Okay. Collinear guys, you probably want to write this one down. I drew the three points earlier here. They put a line through it. Collinear just means that points are on the same line. Now, one thing that comes up, if I draw the points like this, some people say, well, they're not collinear because there's no line. What collinear really means, it means, is it possible to draw a line through them? If it's possible to draw a line, a single line that's not curved that hits all of them, then they're collinear. Imagine like if you're standing in the lunch line and everybody's standing in a straight line, there isn't actually a line there. It's a bunch of people just standing, but if they're lined up, they're collinear. Okay, co kind of indicating that um, they're sharing the same line. Okay, the same thing works with coplanar. Coplanar just means instead of on the same line, it means they're all in the same plane. Okay, so we have an example here. Now, an easier way to think about that is if you drew a couple of dots on your paper, and then you drew another dot on the back wall of the room you're in, the back wall is a different plane than your paper. So that line, that point in the back would not be coplanar. To the ones on your paper. But any dots you draw on your paper, as long as it's not curved, are always coplanar. All right, now for a line segment. And we saw that a little bit earlier, and we already labeled this one, and I think you already have this picture. So they have a little bit more of a definition. It's two endpoints and all of the points in between them that connect them. So we already saw that. One thing I want to point out though, if I wanted to name this segment, and you can add this to your notes, I would write AB just like I did with a line and I would put a symbol like that above it. And the way I would say that is that's called segment AB. And that's what that bar is for. Instead of having to write out the word segment, we put the bar. And by the way, this is the exact same thing because this says it's the, it's the segment that connects A and B. This is the segment that connects B and A. And those are the same thing. A new term that we didn't see in the intro to this video is congruent. 
So please write that down. Notice it's bolded here and I'm going to highlight it for extra emphasis. This is a word that we're going to use so many times in geometry. Okay. And there's a symbol for it. That symbol is right here and I'm going to draw it bigger so that you can see it. What it is, it's an equal sign with, I think it's called a tilde or it's like an approximately sign on top. Okay. And what this is, this is the geometry version of an equal sign. Okay, so we've used the equal sign obviously for a long time since we were little. This new symbol is just saying that you're comparing objects or figures. So that's what this is saying right here. They're saying you use is congruent to when you're talking about figures. Now what's a figure? A figure is some object in geometry. For example, right here, they show that a segment is a figure. It absolutely is. A triangle is a figure. Any shape that you know is a figure. So this is your way of comparing them and saying that they are, in a geometry sense, equal. For segments, it means they are the exact same length. Now notice these two, they're at a little bit different angles. That's okay, because what congruence is saying is that they're the same length. So yeah, they're still congruent. Over here on the left, same thing. You got two segments, they're at different angles, but if they're both 3.2 centimeters, then they are congruent. Another important thing to understand in geometry is the markings that we put on shapes. The reason we put markings on is because it's a lot quicker and easier to see and read than a whole bunch of words. That's one of the things that I find really elegant about geometry is that we don't do a whole lot of writing. A lot of it is so visual and instead of having to write out sentences, we can quickly get information from seeing markings and symbols. So what does it mean? Right here, we have two segments, segment AB and BC, and these markings right here, we call them tick marks. Those are saying that those two are the same length. So rather than having to write out the length, which we don't actually know in this picture, it's saying that they're congruent. It's saying, if I wanted to do it in symbols, that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Now, if you want to draw that picture, please feel free to pause the video at any time. You won't hurt my feelings. In fact, I won't even know you paused it because it's a video. All right. What about on this other picture? Notice here, this one has two markings. Okay. So why do these have one and these have two? Well, really, there's no reason. Okay. You can put two if you want. In fact, I like using two because it's easier for me to see it. But here's what's important. This segment, SP, has two. And this one, RQ, also has two. That means those two are the same length. So let, I'm just going to make up a number. Let's say they're three. But look down here at segment PQ. It has three markings. So that tells us that it has a different length than the ones that have two. So maybe this is four. And this one also has three markings. So this one is also four. Now, another thing that can be important to know is angle markings. And so I'm going to draw this one out because I don't have it on the slides. The way we mark an angle is like this with kind of like a curve or an arc. If I see another shape with that same marking, then I know for sure those two angles are congruent. So let's call this triangle A, B, C, and this one will be X, Y, Z. So right now in my picture, I know that angle A is congruent to angle X. Now, I've introduced a new symbol here, haven't I? This is the angle symbol. And you know what? It looks a lot like less than, like three is less than five. It kind of looks like that, except the difference is the bottom of it is flat. It's not supposed to be angled. Okay. So it's a slightly different symbol. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to mark angle B? There's different ways to do that. I could use a double marking and that would show that it's different than A. And if I come over here, now I've said that B and Y are congruent. They have the same number of degrees. Another way of doing it is I could come down and put a triple marking, but sometimes it's easier to do an angle marker with a tick mark across it. And that's because that's a different symbol. It's seeing, it's saying that C is different than A and B, but it is congruent the same size as Z. Now for a few more details on rays. 
what they're showing here is that like if you get rid of one side of a line what you end up with like here's a whole line cover it up you end up with a ray and that's exactly right what's weird about rays is there's a lot of different ways to name them so let's talk about the symbols maybe you want to pause the video for a second so you can draw this picture that might make it easier to follow along when we name a ray we always start with the endpoint and in this case the endpoint is a so the first letter i pick says where the endpoint is the second letter I pick says what direction it's going, and it's going toward Y and B. You actually get to pick either one you want. So I'm going to pick ray AY, and the symbol goes like this, okay? And that symbol always goes to the right. We'll talk more about that in a second. Another way of naming this ray is I could say it starts at A, and it goes toward B. Well, since Y and B are in the same direction, these two sets of symbols mean the exact same thing. They're the same ray. Now, what would it mean if I changed the order? What if instead I wrote ray B, Y? Is that the same ray? Well, let's draw it on here and see. That says a ray that starts at B and goes toward Y. That would be this ray. And so that's not the same one. That's an incorrect way of naming this ray. So I'm gonna get that off of here. Now, what about the order? That's what this down here is illustrating, okay? Here we have ray A, B, it starts at A, goes toward B, and we can see that in the symbol. Starts at A, goes toward B. See the arrow is by the B? Down here, we have ray that starts at B and it goes toward A. But you see how this says BA and it looks like A is on the left and B is on the right? This symbol always points right. We never have it point left when we're writing out the name of the ray. So what these symbols right here say, it says a ray that starts at B, that's the endpoint and goes toward A, and that's exactly what this ray does. All right, midpoint and bisects. We really already talked about this. A midpoint is the point in the middle, and bisects is anything that cuts exactly in half. So let's try the questions below. In fact, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video draw out these shapes, and then try to answer the question for yourself. Then when you hit play, you'll see what I think the answers are, and we can compare our thinking. All right. Now, hit, now that you've hit play, let's see the answers. So let's see. Name each midpoint in the segment it bisects. All right. So let's look at the first one. F is the midpoint. So F bisects. And what that's saying is, what is, the, what is F in the middle of? Now, I can see that this is 2, so I'm going to put a mark, and this is also 2, which means for sure F is exactly in the middle. So it's in the middle of segment CD, for sure. Is it also exactly in the middle of EG? Well, it looks like it, but in geometry, looking like it is not good enough. I need information that tells me for a fact, 100%, bet my life, that it's true. And I don't have that information. So I cannot say, so guys, if you wrote that it bisects EG, I totally get why, okay? It looks like it, but we don't have information for that, so we can't say that. Let's go to the next one. K, K is in the middle of something, so I'm gonna say K bisects, what is it in the middle of? Now, when I did this example in class the other day, a lot of the students said, it's in the middle of the triangle. Mm, the middle of the triangle is probably somewhere in here, okay? And actually, we're gonna learn later, there's lots of different ways to describe the middle of a triangle. But what it's specifically in the middle of, because of these markings that show the two sides are the same, it is definitely in the middle of segment JL. So that is the correct answer on that one. Down here, N looks like the midpoint. Hey y'all, do you know for a fact that those two are the same? I don't. And so I actually cannot answer question A on that one. I'm going to put a question mark. Okay. Part B asked us to name all congruent segments and use the congruence symbol. So I'm going to go back and do part B now. So that would be on this one, C to F is 2, F to D is 2. So segment CF is congruent to segment FD. And don't forget the segment markers over the top. Over here, I have the markings on these two, and that's segments JK, haha, JK, and segment KL. Over here, again, I have no idea. So for that last one, it's actually not an answerable question. Now guys, almost nobody gets that right in this first video, okay? Usually people try to answer the last one. So if you got it wrong, that's totally normal, okay? It actually means your brain is working correctly and filling in the gaps. 
we just have to train it to be a little bit more critical when we're looking at geometry. So actually that's, if you got it wrong, that's actually fine, it means your brain is working great. Let's try another example. What I'd like you to do here is write down this question and write down the picture and pause the video and I want you to try to answer it for yourself. Once you've answered it for yourself, then you can play the video and see if your answers agree with mine. Here we go. I'm gonna start by naming all the lines. Now, okay, there's technically only one line here, but what this really means is what are all the different ways to name those lines? So I could name it line MA, and I could name it line uh, MT, because M and T are both there. I could name it line MH, I could name it line AT. I could call it line AH. And I could call it line TH. So that's all the different combinations. Now guys, understand all of those, all six of those descriptions are all describing the same line. And then maybe you have the letters backward. That's okay, that's actually great. That would be six new ways of naming it. I'm not gonna make you watch me write them all out right now, but that would also be right. So for example, if instead you wrote line AM, that is right, okay? Now, what about the segments? Guys, the segments are exactly the same, okay? There's no change. The only difference is like if you were doing a segment MA, you would put the bar without the arrow. So I'm not gonna write those out either, but the rays get a little bit more interesting because actually there are lots of different rays in this picture, okay? So this is gonna take just a second. There is one ray that goes like this, and that ray is called ray TH. In fact, I'm gonna get all the rays that go to the right right now. There is another ray that goes like this. It goes from A that direction. So I could call that either ray AT or ray AH. Oops. You see my mistake? I used a lowercase letter, whoopsies. You probably have that habit too. If you don't, wow, that's really lucky for you. And then there's another ray that's over here that starts from M and it also goes to the right. So there's a couple ways to name that one. I could call it MA, it goes toward A. And I could call it MT. And I could call it MH. All of those are correct, okay, because from here, A, T, and H are all going to the right, so those are all valid descriptions. Now, what if you change the direction on these? Well, let's see. I wanna actually um, go onto the picture to do this. So let's start from the left side this time. So there's a ray that goes from A that way, so that would be called ray A, M. Notice my arrow on my symbol's going right. I said earlier in the video, they always go right, and that is still true. Okay, so this goes this way to the left. So the, the actual picture can go left, but the symbols always go right. Two names for this one. This is ray TA, and it's also ray TM. And then the final one, there's one from H right here that goes left. And there's three ways to name that. HT, HA, HA, and HM. Hmm. So that is all of the lines, the rays, and the segments. All right, last question. Same deal on this one, y'all. I would like you to pause your video and try this question, and then when you're ready, then hit play. All right, there's actually two issues with this. The first one is, this is a ray, and this is a line. You really can't have a ray and a line be equal because the line goes in two directions forever, left and right, or whatever two directions it is, and a ray only goes in one direction forever. Or like, for example, a ray has an endpoint, but a line doesn't, so that wouldn't work. The second issue is these are both objects. And in geometry, we don't say that objects are equal, we say that they are congruent, okay? So it would need to have that symbol there to make it congruent. That's gonna be it for this first introductory video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you next time.